Hi, this is Janet. Thank you so much for coming to this live session. I can't thank you enough for following me. I hope you're learning something. My goal is to always leave you better than you found me. So I hope you learned something. So thank you so much for coming today. Well, some of you did not see me during the week, but if you didn't see me during the week, I covered a lot of ground, especially when it comes to community colleges. So please, if you didn't watch that video kindly, scroll down here and go and watch i'm very i'm a very strong advocate for f1 student visas and particularly community colleges because they are cheaper because they are easier if you can squeeze yourself through a community college you will come and thank janet rangi as always thank you so much for liking thank you so much for liking janet rangi here on facebook it's janet rangi thank you so much for your five star reviews thank you so much for following and for liking okay all right remember to subscribe youtube subscribe janet rangi we are doing very well actually if you didn't watch my video during the week maybe you've missed you know i said this year we are going to manifest success and janet is also manifesting you can see some of you didn't see that what's that okay janet is manifesting that's a check from google youtube okay i'm as you manifest I manifest okay I manifest through helping us okay so today as you can see the title okay and before I even begin sorry for those people who are booking appointments because of the pandemic if you book people to help you with the website is taking longer longer than expected so I have to apologize but keep booking right now some people call me Janet the whole of February is full don't be scared as soon as the website is done and the links are in order I will move so quick. I will move so quick with those appointments. So do not be discouraged. This will be special consultations. Special consultations for those who want information that is geared on an individual basis. Okay? But the rest of you, of course, follow. I have nothing to hide. So today's title, Green Cards. And if you are not ready, if you are new on this page, Janet always says, have a pen and paper. Some of you have watched me many years. This is a topic I've covered before. But I know these things how they work. Unless you've lived here and stayed here, these things you forget. Okay? This, this is a refresher for those who followed me for a while. For those of you who are new, continue subscribing and learning more about Janet Rangi. Today, I will talk about the many ways people get green cards. Pen and paper. I just have to tell you, pen and paper. Why is Janet doing this? So you can be prepared. So that you can prepare okay some of you just want to pack your luggage and go to america pack your luggage and go to canada without preparing how about having information i'm a big advocate of having information how people get green cards in the united states true tested ways okay these are true tested ways and more than likely you will fall through these categories that janet is going to mention Okay, greetings. I see all of you. Thank you so much for following. Merci beaucoup. Adios. Okay, adios is bye bye. Sorry. Okay, muchas gracias. Muchas gracias. Okay, number one, let me just say this in passing. Okay, refugees get green cards. How? Don't ask me. That is something that is prepared by organizations outside, outside the United States. So refugees come through organizations and through the government. Okay, they don't uh, file. For green cards individually so we don't need to know that unless you are a refugee and you are going through those organizations through the united nations okay but that, that's how people get green cards i mean this city i'm telling you most of the people came here as refugees and they work in the meat company they love it the meat company employs a lot of refugees okay refugees come from uh most of them are from sudan we have we have west africa the congo Okay, many of them, we have people from Burma, Asia. Okay, I live in this city. If you go there in the meat company at night, <laughs> you'll think you're somewhere in Africa or something. They're changing shifts, okay? When they start working, mostly they are, oh, I'm happy. They start with $16 an hour, $20 an hour. And my city is bringing Amazon soon. So the competition, I don't know what the meat company will do. I don't know what the meat company will do. It depends who will pay better. Maybe Amazon or the meat company. I'm telling you, okay? Now, unless you are a refugee, don't worry. But 
The next one is people get green cards through asylum. I'll cover everything. Me, I'm here to cover everything. How does asylum work? Some people come here, okay, and then they, they fear political perse perse persecution. They fear social persecution, okay? There are many things that can make people fear for their lives, and therefore they petition for asylum, and then they ask, the U.S. to give them what? A green card. That takes time. There's a process. You have to know why you file asylum. All I can tell you, if you show up and you fear for your life, you have to know why you fear for your life. You have to file within one year. After one year, no one is giving you a green card through asylum. Now, there's more to talk about that, but that's all I've said. If you have a pen and paper, the most important thing, if you want to file asylum, from the time you step in the United States, you have one year to file. After that, you've just made your life very, very difficult, okay? Very difficult. I'm just telling you, okay? I'm telling you this information. This I know it happens. I hope you wrote down. When I say write down, I know where people make mistakes. You come on any visa and you try to file asylum. It has to be within one year. Key point, one year, okay? Let's move to the third way. Let's go... Third way how people get green cards. Employment best. Janet is telling you the truth. I'm just telling you. So when you're, when you're thinking of coming to the United States, you should be placing yourself in one of these brackets. As on this page, you just don't come haphazard. You know Janet likes the word haphazard. We come with a plan. Like where do I fall? When I go there, where am I going to fall in this category? Okay? Category number three is what? Employment best green cards. They have something called EB-1. We are still under employment base. I don't know why it's under employment based. EB-1 is, is completely extraordinary. Okay? You don't even need an employer to file for EB-1. Extraordinary. Many of us probably we don't qualify. Why do I say? Because any of you watching me has a Nobel Peace Prize, like President Obama. Okay? <laughs> it's that high. Okay? Okay. Athletes, any of us who is Kipchoge Keino? Do you understand? Are you understanding? So it has to be extraordinary talent. Okay? That's EB1, extraordinary talent. EB2, also extraordinary talent, but some people who have PhD can qualify. How? They have maybe, some of you say, Janet, I have a PhD, I plan PhD. Listen, you have published in papers. You are non-science research. You've done research, you've public, uh, published papers, and people in your, in your country can show that. And by the way, some of you think these things are impossible. But after look, if you have a good lawyer, you can qualify. If I didn't have a, a, a green card, this is how I'd qualify. If I get a lawyer, I show how much I've been blogging here. I show, I show my YouTube. I show my Facebook. And I show how many people have helped. And then I show them how they published me in Standard Kenya. How they published me in Nation Kenya. Do you understand? Some of you look at these things and you think these are simple things. It, you have to have extraordinary talent. And yes, do I know bloggers I've seen on YouTube who got EB2 visas through this? Yes, it's a mountain to climb. But if you can prove that there are newspapers, there are organizations that have published your work, okay? You, you've helped a majority of the people in the community, okay? I'm just giving you an example, okay? Now, EB2, we are still on employment base, so start placing yourself somewhere. If you are an athlete, if you are a footballer, okay, if you play volleyball and you have national championships, maybe you have uh, championships in your continent or world championships, start you never know who is listening to these things. Start placing yourself. As Janet continues, start finding a way where how you'll get a green card. Uh, oh, the good news with Janet, stay put, stay, stay till the end. You don't have to be Kipchoge Keino. Okay? You don't have to be President Obama who got a Nobel Peace Prize. So listen carefully. Janet will cover everyone. Okay? Let's move to EB3. I got my green card through EB3. It's called skilled workers. I had, I had only I had a foreign bachelor's degree. And I found an employer who was willing to change for me from F1 to green card. Okay? I fell through skilled workers. So that means anyone with a, a bachelor's degree. But it has to be in a specific field. In this case, let me just be honest with you. Okay? Nursing. Okay? 
physical therapy. I always say physical therapy and no one pays attention to physical therapy. If you have a bachelor's degree in physical therapy, they prefer a master's program, but each state is different. You find an employer, you can get a green card. People like talking about uh, just nurses, nurses, but they forget about, you know, uh, physical therapy. Okay? All right. So uh, continue placing yourself. Okay? They have something called EB4. This is for religious workers. A pastor or, you know, you are coming to lead a certain church. By the way, uh, there are some places here in the United States, they have a shortage of priests. Okay? So you, you become, you come and lead a parish. Right? Okay, we have people who work in the prison system. They need, you know, they give Bible studies in the prison system. Okay, so that's another way how people get green cards. Then there's EB-5, I think it's for investors. Okay, but you get the point. You've covered employment best. Let me move to us, us. Okay, number four, H-1B. Okay, and F-1 visa. Okay, that's how people get green cards. You remember Janet telling you she loves, loves F-1 student visa. Why do I love F1 student visa? Okay? You make sure you graduate, which many of us will, with a bachelor's degree. Okay? And then just before you start your OPT, if you're new on Janet Rangi, keep following. These are a lot of terminologies. They will put you in a pool. Okay? If you have an American education, okay? You get F1, you graduate with an American education. You can be put in the pool of H1B visas. You find an employer to throw you in that pool which is like a lottery, H-1B will be good for three years. You can renew for another three years, for a total of six years. But the good news, employers can always change your visa from H-1B to green card. You understand? Another way, J-1 visa. J-1 visa, I'll just be honest with you, I have followers who listened to me many years ago, not many years, last year they, they came here and said, Janet, this is one visa where people don't take advantage. I'm here. I'm working in a hotel, Janet, on J-1 visa. But that is something to watch with J-1 visa. These are home residency requirement because it falls under cultural exchange programs. They expect you to come and learn and take back home. So they expect you to go back, I think, for two years. But there's a waiver. That's how medical doctors come. They come and go on residency programs, but they find waivers. And I'll talk about this in the coming videos. That's why you have to follow Janet Rangi, full of knowledge. I don't even know where to start. You understand? Just because they say J1 visa does not mean you can't stay. There are waivers. For example, if you come from a country of Uganda, you can let the government of Uganda write a letter and say, we do not need Janet in Uganda. She can stay in America. <laughs> That's a waiver. <laughs> okay? All right, you can find a, a job with the government that it shows in the national interest, okay? Maybe you're a medical worker in a, underserved areas. That's a national waiver, okay? They need you in that field. They waive the J-1, okay? Then, then you can work on H-1B, and then eventually you get a green card. Are you understanding? But J, J-1 is one of, and don't ask me, Janet, 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 cultural exchange. I'll come and cover a full topic about cultural exchange. That is a full video. Right now, I'm not working on cultural exchange a lot, even conferences, but cultural exchange, because it's a working visa and those have been stopped, okay? And as we well know, Wednesday is a new day in this country. Keep an eye. Okay? Wednesday is a new day, so keep an eye. Then, when they start opening up, because even if I go to those websites, they're kind of closed because they know you can't get a visa anyway. It's a working visa, so no, let's not talk about J-1. But just know if you have J-1 and you get a waiver, you can get a green card so long as you have what an employer okay how many of you feel like they are falling in one of the categories i know some of you are like oh my god she has not covered mine but if you are a student honestly i've already covered if you come on f1 this is how you end up with a green card okay regardless of which field you so long as you can get an employer they put you in the h1b pool you can end up with a green card so you should be thinking that if i get f1 I'm going to study this field after this field or I have to take myself to PhD. I have to take myself to a master's. Because for H-1B, they even have extra visas. I think they give like 65000 But they reserve another 20000 for people who have a master's and a PhD. So you want to stay in the medical field. Okay, this is how people get these green cards. Okay, moving on, moving on. Okay, family. Family is all these people we are talking about. Family best. They get uh, asylum. They are refugees. Okay? They get employment best. 
they get H1B. All these people can bring their spouses and their children under 21. Do you understand? So that's how they call it family-based green card. You attach yourself to the original applicant. Now, I hope I said something. Now, the best, some of you have been waiting for this one. Of course, it's marriage to a permanent resident or a U.S. citizen. You can get a green card through marriage. Okay? Through marriage. This is how people, some of you just, you, you pay attention. See where you fall. This is how you'll stay permanently in the United States. These are some of the ways I'm telling you. This is how you'll stay. Marriage. Marriage is what I don't even have to... To, 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 to expand on that. If you haven't watched the video, I did how to get a green card through marriage uh, and how to come to the United States through spousal or marriage visa. I've done those videos. Scroll down here or go on YouTube, Janet Rangi, and watch those videos, JanetRangi.com. All this information is out there. All you need is just to inform yourself. I've talked about spousal visas, how people come to the United States through spouses. I've talked about that. You have 90 days to marry. Okay, so marriage is a big one. Let me just be honest. Those days, people used to get green cards through military. But these days, keep your eye open. Again, things are changing. Keep an eye. But that used to be a good avenue for people to get green cards. Okay, of course, all of us here, we know the lottery. Some of you just think, oh, when you get a green card, it's through the lottery. That is the least common. In as much as it's popular and you know it, Many people do not get green cards through the lottery. The fewest people get through the lottery. Many people get through these things Janet is telling you. So when you're coming, you should be thinking on how to switch to some of these levels that Janet is telling you. I wouldn't put all my eggs in one basket and wait for the lottery. I will not do that. I will not do that because, the, but I have to mention, every October and November, they will announce. Now we know that Right now, things are on standstill. Again, on Wednesday, the future of these things is in the balance. We'll see what happens, okay? By green card, 2021 winners, maybe they'll start processing you in March. Who knows? Okay, for now, things are in standstill, okay? But we, 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 we'll wait and see. We'll wait and see. So, having said that, I don't know if I, I, I can see any comments, okay? If you came in late, I've just gone through the quickest ways. How people get green cards, you have an idea. So before you leave, or if you're here in the United States and you're not paying attention, some of it is, oh, it's only marriage. Oh, it's only lottery. No. Okay. We've talked about refugees. We've talked about asylum. We've talked about employment best, which could be H uh, EB1, 2, 3 to 5. Skilled workers who have bachelor's degrees, religious workers, investors who want to start a business. We've gone through family best. If you're a spouse or child, of a U.S. citizen, spouse or child of a permanent resident, you get a green card. We've talked about the lottery. We've talked about marriage. So open your eyes. You can always start with one visa. It leads you to another one. You come with one visa. It leads to another one. As always, keep watching. Keep following. I can't see any comments for now, but that's the preparation I had for you today. Okay? I don't see any questions. When I don't see questions, it means Janet has done a good job of presenting this information sorry i came in late but i just have to do what i have to do i've been busy reading and preparing myself i have a i have to do an exam in february you know me i'm always busy i keep myself busy i'm always saying if i wake up today what will i have accomplished at the end of the day can an invitation letter be used more than once no the same person that wrote you a letter they can write another one if you didn't come for that trip, if you did not come for that trip, okay? I mean, if someone invited you to come in December last year and you're going to the embassy in February this year, then you have to update. All you need is to tell the same person to write you a new letter, okay? I don't have to use the same one unless it's still within the time limit, okay? Are there scholarships and what percentage of scholarships can one get? This scholarship issue I've covered so many times and I always tell you the best way to get a scholarship is becoming a student first. Like no one cares who you are until you become a student. Because when you become a student and you get admission, the schools will give you the available scholarships. They will tell you how to apply for scholarships. Okay, but if you're just thinking you get a scholarship first before you join, it doesn't work like that. 
And as far as percentages are concerned, again, it just depends with the school, the program, and what you're doing. So your goal should not be the scholarship. Let me tell you one thing. Even some people have come on this page and they, they've told you. Anytime you're thinking of obstacles, that is, a, you want to get admission. Your goal should be, how do I go to the United States as a student? Okay? As a student. That is your goal. The goal is not a scholarship. You have it the other way around. And this, I get it so many times. You have it the, the other way around. Your goal should be, I want to go to the United States as a student. That is goal number one. And the rest will follow. And I've taught you how people pay for colleges and universities in the United States. If you didn't watch that video last week, again, scroll down. So you can you imagine someone who is waiting for a scholarship or someone who went and applied for school and watched Janet Rangi, how people would pay. Okay? Look for how can I pay myself. Don't look how can someone else help me. How can I help myself? How long after medical exams? Sorry, that uh, comment went too quick. How long after something, something? How long after medical exam can one get a permanent residence visa? And what happens? That's a very general question, like a medical exam for visa. Like not everyone goes for a medical exam before they get a visa, unless you're talking about green card. But that is usually, by the time you do medical exam, we are talking about a month or two left. Like they are processing you to get a green card, right? I, Rosemary, I don't understand your question. Not everyone does medical exams. And what are they looking for? Communicable diseases, like tuberculosis. Some of those diseases that they've tried to stop through vaccinations in the United States, when new people come in the country, they make sure you have those vaccinations. Actually, medical exams is to make sure you catch up with the vaccination records in the United States, to make sure before you enter, you have those vaccines. Okay, some people just think, oh, they are looking for HIV. They are, no, that's not necessarily what they are looking for. They are looking for communicable diseases, especially tuberculosis. Those that are not endemic, okay, they, they, specifically, but these days HIV, there's very good treatment. So long as you're taking medicines, I'm not here to say what they look for, okay, but I can tell you number one on the list is to catch up with the vaccinations to make sure you have the right vaccines. If not, the doctors do something called tyrus. Those ones show which vaccines you have in your blood. They can tell you have tetanus, you can tell you have measles, they can tell. And the ones that are missing, the doctor will recommend before you take that plan, okay? So understand these things. Let me see. The comments are not moving. I have to apologize. Listening loud and clear, someone. I want to see any comments. I don't want to miss important comments. Okay. Is human nutrition and that... that that dietitians marketable in the u.s okay this is one of those countries i'll be honest with you this is one of those countries that i never want to say that something is more marketable than another one countries that talk like that have a problem with employment okay if you uh, on janet Rangi, the more you watch janet please and i i love your question i love your question but the more you watch me understand the general view janet is presenting you a different way of looking at things it's not about the job market it has nothing to do with that the first step in the united states is how do i stay there permanently how do i find a job there are many people who come here and maybe they are teachers it can take maybe one year or two years before they finish the paperwork to do with teaching does it mean they don't work no do they have a working visa yes they work they might never even return to teaching. Maybe they find something else that pays them even better. So your mindset when you're thinking of coming to the United States should be, should not be, is it marketable? Okay, that is very rigid. That applies to those countries that have no jobs. Or those countries that are very low, you know. This country here is not about your profession. It's about how well you are able to adapt. In fact, that's the most important thing. If there's anything you can live with on this video, I don't care your profession. English, history, Swahili, local studies, politics, wherever it is, it's how well you are able to adapt to a new country that will make a difference. It has nothing to do with your profession. Completely zero. I can tell you right now. Is it easy if you've done some things like nursing and then you transition? If you've done some things like dentistry, medicine, and then you transition? Probably, yes. But that should not be a goal. It's not... 
Okay, another way of putting it like this. If you come here, who told you you have to stick with nutrition? It's how well you're able to adapt. And if you come here and you start looking for, you know, I'm scared of going back to school because it will take me four years. Again, this is not the correct country for you. This is a country when you come, where do I start finding a job? As I transition, anytime you go to a new country, there's a transitioning period, okay? How do I change? How do I adapt? Okay? But having a first degree always helps. That I can tell you. Okay? There's something I've talked about, accelerated nursing programs on this page. Again, keep following. Go on janetrangi.com. I'll continue doing videos. People that have a first degree in anything can always come here and do accelerated nursing program and get a bachelor's degree in nursing they don't have to go and start from scratch they can take some of the courses you did at home and fast track you into a nursing program why because you already have a first degree oh janet my first degree is in humanities my first degree is in the arts that is not the point the point is you have a first degree therefore you are ready for a rigorous program you are ready to handle the paperwork. You are ready to handle the coursework. That's what they are looking at. They are not looking at what you specialized in. They are just looking at someone who managed to finish high school and graduated with a bachelor's degree or has a master's degree. That means they are able to adapt very quick and keep up with the coursework. Because accelerated programs, the, the program is squeezed. So you are doing it very quick. Okay, so I, that would, thank you for that question. Whoever asked about nutrition, I like that question. Why? I don't care about nutrition, but look at how well you're able to adapt. This many ways Janet is telling you how people stay in the United States. That is how you're looking at. How do I get a green card? That is the most important thing. If you want to move here, you, 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 and I, and I understand. I've been there before. Okay, we come from a system where People will choose in high school what they wanted. Oh, I want BCom, and then depending on the grade, they throw you in BCom. Depending on the grade, they throw you in nursing. Depending on the grade, they throw you in teaching. That was just the way we do things at home, but here it's different. Here you get to do what you want. And if you come here and nutrition is marketable, good. You will have to learn how foreign nutritionists transition into the United States and follow. What if you come here and realize, you know what? I can just do pharmacy. They are not going to stop you. They are not going to stop you. So look at it that way. If you are a policeman back at home and you say, you know what? I want to do teaching. They are not going to stop you. Okay? Maybe you are one of those girls who was very ambitious and you want to become a pilot. No one is going to stop you. Okay? You are not going to prove to anyone that you got an A in high school. They have no time for that. They have no time. For, I'm sorry. And here, the more you go to college, the more no one cares about your high school. But it's very important that you graduate that high school. Very important. Very, very important. But if you're in the United States and you did not graduate high school, that's not even the end. You do GED. For those who followed me, again, keep following Janet Rangi GED. Okay, there's a course you can do and then they catch up and they give you something equivalent to a high school degree. And then you can use that to join a community college. Who told you if you join a community college, you can never end up into medicine. You can never end up being a professor. So I'm doing change. This is different. This is different. We, we, are, we, we are playing a different game. Okay? It's decisions will be made by you. And that will bring me, I'll do this video during the week. Remind me if I don't. I don't elongate this video, but I think this will take me during the week. I'll make a video like if you come to the United States, how much will you invest in education? And is it worth it? Because one of my followers called me, Janet, I wanted to do, uh, to do a master's. And he already has a master's in something else. And we went through this and I said, okay, how old are you? I like looking at the age because it's just the truth. But, you know, it doesn't stop you from doing anything, but... It depends how much do you have like if you are going to switch into something new how is it going to help you because everything is money okay how about if you're in business why can't you just continue with a side hustle with business like why would you go start paying student loans 
and then come out you know like i'll cover that in details this is not a video for today okay but this is one of those countries again okay this is not to discourage you but this is to encourage you okay it's not about grades and it's not about education education is a good thing yes but you can make it whichever way you want sometimes and I don't want to say this, sorry, I just have to say it again, sorry, forgive me, forgive me, forgive me, but let me just say it, I have to say it, okay? Education is not everything, okay? Education sometimes can just be a status. I'm, I'm sorry, I mean, I know, some of us plus, Janet is educated too. I have three degrees, so I'm not saying anything against me. Knowing what I know now. Did I have to do, do three degrees? Probably not. What I know now, probably I would have made five times the money that I have or ten times. Not going to school. Am I happy with my education? Yes. Because you'll drop me any part of the world, I'll treat people and get some money. Because I can look at what they have, prescribe some medicine, order them an x-ray and make a living. Okay? Is that the thing that will make me a millionaire necessarily? No. Okay, so, like, it's, um, it's a choice. It's a choice. So education is not everything. Okay, some of you, let me share with you. You know, I wrote on this page that my son got admission. You remember? I'm very happy. I have a 17-year-old. That time he was admitted to one university. He's applying for pre-med, pre-medicine. He got admitted, and I posted on the page how proud I am. And I told you I had applied to more than 10 schools. Now we have three admissions. He has admission to three schools. Three, three schools. But I keep on telling him it's good for you to have that foundation in education, but that's not everything. And why do I bring up the story of my son? By the way, he has a job. He started a part-time job in the evening. He's very excited. He's getting, I think, almost eight or nine dollars an hour. I'm happy. He keeps on counting how many hours. Every evening, say, today I put in eight hours, multiply by eight, that's $64. I'm like, good, <laughs> okay, good. And then I open for him a bank account, okay? But why am I telling you this? It depends what you want in life. You know, know yourself. I know some of you. Some of you going to Harvard is so important. So pursue Harvard, <laughs> Okay. Your, your, so, your life is so tied to education and your status is so tied to education that people have to know I went to Harvard. People have to know I went to Yale. I went to UPenn. By the way, Janet went to UCLA. Okay? Top school. Most of the time, top 10 in the world. But that's not what I tie myself to. But I know some people are very... It matters. You, everything you do in life matters that you went to the University of Nairobi. That defines who you are, okay? So pursue University of Nairobi because that's who you are, okay? That's who you are. And I was telling my son, do you want to graduate as a doctor or you want to, to, to become a researcher and be known? Because going to Harvard, I'm not going to speak for Harvard. I'm just saying what I know, okay? Those are people, not, not, they don't go there necessarily because of... It's because... They, I said to my son, let me give a perfect example because I saw President Obama do this and many people, if you watch TV, you will see most people are graduates of Harvard. Why? They'll probably teach you how to be a community organizer and how to join politics and meet politicians and meet the best business people in the world. They will teach you how to start a grassroots movement. I'm, I'm assuming, don't quote me on this. So I was asking my son, do you want to go there? Is that what you want in life or you just want to be a doctor, get licensed? I want to be a doctor, get licensed, then go to any school that makes sense to you. Good, uh, uh, and, and uh, like no one asks you, where did you graduate? Like if you are not RN, they don't care. Is the school certified in the United States? Yes. Now, if you're one of those people wants to be a professor and, and teach and be a professor, then you need these prestigious schools to show up on your resume. Okay, because you, 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 that's how you want to be seen as an academic scholarly person. Then Harvard becomes important because one day you want to be a professor, okay? You want to write research articles and be renowned in these publications. And you want your son to, 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 to show up in the best schools in the world. Oxford. My son went to Oxford. My daughter went to Harvard. Pursue. 
okay but if your goal is to practice medicine in the united states it's who cares you can go to one of these border states like uh, you know some of these universities so long as they're in the united states and they're certified like the board wants you to pass exams graduate get license as a doctor why am i telling you this story in details know yourself know yourself because if you're the harvard kind you better pursue what will take you to harvard okay if you're one person who doesn't care about education business is an avenue and you will just make more money than the people who went to harvard you know what i mean like self introspection know who you are know who you are that's the most imp if you know who you are everything else will fall in place okay personally i work with people who might earn more on the job but because i've invested in myself at the end of the year i probably beat all of them in the amount of money i get because i invest in myself do you understand so if you know who you are and what you want and that's why janet keeps on telling me about community colleges i love community colleges at the end of everything how is the, which is the easiest way for me to come to the united states and not have a very heavy expensive bill for me to go to school if you can squeeze yourself through a community college my friend and you are one of those people who just knows that you want to succeed in life go to a community college cheap fees and then when you reach here you put yourself together okay and i'm just saying i'm just saying and so I love that question from someone who asked me about nutrition because that opened my mind just to remind you, some of you, how you should be thinking when you come to America. It's an open society with a lot of opportunities. And so it's the, 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 the sky is the limit, your but your decisions matter. Your decisions matter because I always say, whoever you hang around with, if you've watched me for, 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 for long, I've told you studies have shown that you are an average of your five friends. So more likely, if your friends are earning 50000 a year, most likely you're earning 50000 40000 or 60 something You're an average. Okay, you're an average of the people you surround yourself with, whether you like it or not. They will influence your thinking. If you earn 50000 and then you start finding friends that earn 200000 you will change. All of a sudden, you'll earn one hundred and fifty, Or before you know it, you'll earn two hundred. Why? Because they will transfer the knowledge they have to you. They will challenge you. You will start asking because every day you walk with them or you talk with them, you, you realize that they are talking at a different game. They are talking at a different game. So just know yourself. Just know yourself. Some people driving a big car is very important. So just know yourself. The car will make you happy. So use that as a motivation to work hard. You want a Mercedes Benz, a G wagon? That should be a motivation for you. To work hard nothing against by the nothing just know who you are and what makes you happy okay if 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 you if if you define yourself with the amount of money you have good if you define yourself by giving to others good if you're one of those people who doesn't care so long as you make a dollar good just know who you are okay but i hope today you learned about the many ways of getting green cards i'll make another video maybe tomorrow okay and during the week and I will expand some of these topics, okay? And um, all the best with the week, okay? We are having an interesting week. This, this, this week we are changing governments. And so we'll see. We'll see what happens afterwards. Continue following. As I said, subscribe on Janet Rangi on YouTube. Okay, Janet is manifest, manifesting. Continue following me on Facebook and JanetRangi.com. And I started going on Instagram. Some of I've started posting pictures. Okay, as I posting pictures, because the more I'm out there, the more people know me. And I know where we come from, not where we come from, generally, everywhere. Sometimes being in public is a bad thing, but most of the time, if you want to succeed, you have to do, you, have, you just have to cross that fear and be on the other side. The most successful people in society, you know them. And they took a risk to put themselves out there. Some people will judge, but that's how they make money, right? Think of anyone where you come from, right? Think of anyone who, who, who is making money and he didn't get it from, from, from their parents. 
they probably took a risk and became politicians and you they come and talk talk and you follow and then you vote them in and then some of you feel i don't want people to see me on facebook i don't want it's directly linked to money <laughs> okay i'm just telling you it's the truth i've always given a uh, an example of being here if i was to start selling water you and we sell the same water one is written janet rangi and the other one is written unknown the line for janet rangi will be maybe five thousand and this other one there will be two people it that it just it, so know yourself know yourself and do the right things okay i love you so much for following me merci beaucoup muchas gracias adios kwaheri asante Thank you so much for following Janet Rangi. I will see. I'm going to make more, 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 more videos every day. Okay? Sorry your comments stopped moving. And if I come checking them, you'll keep it. It will mess up this video. But I'll go down here. As I say, the comments are not for Janet only. They are for all of us. You learn a lot from the comment section. Okay? Thank you so much for coming. I feel so bad that I didn't check out the comments. But sorry. Next time I'll do that, okay? Kwaheri, bye-bye. Thank you, Zimbabwe. Thank you, Zambia. Thank you, Doha. Okay? Kenya, Nairobi. Uganda, thank you. Ghana, I see you. Nigeria, I see you, okay? And I saw some of these west african countries not so many people but yeah those are the common people if i forget your country you tell me janet you didn't tell me my country okay malawi okay i can't forget malawi tanzania mm -hmm. okay ethiopia i know i know i know you are all watching and i can't thank you enough for coming because you know all these things it doesn't matter which country you come from is the same thing so long as you're planning to come to the united states wherever janet has said applies to everyone worldwide regardless of country of origin okay this information is standard information regardless of where you come from outside the united states so thank you so much i will see you in the next video thank you so much bye bye